here. My name is Chris Hintz with Fortinet. I'm a senior director of products and solutions. And as we've started to do with a lot of these field days, I want to just kind of kick things off by going through a little review, kind of our vision of how we do things, what our product portfolio looks like, so everyone can get a feel. Because I know that every year there's some new people online that are kind of seeing this for the first time. A little bit about Fortinet. Yes, you know, this is the Fortinet that you're thinking of. For some of you who go, gosh, you know, aren't they a security company? I thought they, they made firewalls. Yes, yes, we do. It's what a lot of people know us for. But we do more than just that. You know, we do a lot of different products. And networking is one of those areas that we are really building out and doing more with because one of the big things that we have started looking at and building towards this idea of convergence. The, you know, if I kind of think about when I started in this space over 20 years ago, oh gosh. Um, we usually talked about like the networking group and the security group were completely siloed from each other. They didn't talk to each other. It was highly adversarial. I'm not going to claim that it doesn't sometimes still happen, but we are really seeing that these are blending together. And a lot of what we talk about now is that there's almost this new market that's emerging, this idea of a secure networking market, where these two things need to be working hand in hand. And that is really where Fortinet shines. This is what we believe in. It's what our founders have been driving towards since they founded this company, the idea that networking and security cannot be separate from each other. And the reason for that is there's two big drivers that we see going on in the market. One is, you know, I, I know it's a buzzword, and, you know, there's some, some of the familiar faces that I've talked to in the past, and you know, I know World of Rise a little bit, this digital acceleration and all these different marketing words for this concept that just more and more is being deployed at a faster and faster pace. Whether you believe the buzzwords or not, whether you like the buzzwords or not, there's really no denying that that is occurring. And as more and more is being deployed to do more and more over our networks, as we ask our networks to do more and more, that puts a lot of strain on what's going on. And when you pair that with an ever-evolving threat landscape, with the bad actors getting better and better at coming up with ways to circumvent security, et cetera, those two things put pressures on your security and networking groups to make sure that what you're deploying is as secure as possible. And if you don't bring things together, you're going to have real issues. And what we start to see when I talk to, to people in like our executive briefing center, et cetera, is a lot of companies start trying to build this. They have a bunch of different products from a different, bunch of different vendors and they start trying to plug in to deal with everything they're doing from a networking perspective and to try and secure everything. It becomes this massive patchwork that doesn't work. It's almost impossible for them to keep this going productively. It's too much. And they need a way that they can bring things together, that they can get rid of the complexity that is both slowing down what they need to do to get their networks to perform, but also, frankly, complexity is the enemy of good security. So they need to find a way to get rid of that complexity. And that's where the Fortinet security fabric comes into play. Now, again, if you've been watching us over the years, You've heard me talk about the security fabric several times. I know the diagram has shifted a little bit year to year, but this idea of a broad portfolio of product that all integrates with each other, sharing information so that you can then automate response to events that happen throughout the fabric, that's the idea that Fortinet is really keyed in on. That's what we are trying to provide with our portfolio. Okay, so with that ground set, I know it's Mobility Field Day. So let's actually talk a little bit about the wireless portfolio. And I won't go into a lot of detail about every single access point model. I just want to kind of hit some bullet points and talk a little bit because I think it's sometimes easy to assume that as a security company, ah, we probably don't necessarily have a full range, well, but we do. You know, we've got the Wi-Fi 6, we've got 6E. We'll be there with Wi-Fi 7, of course, when, when that streets. And, and I, depending on who you believe, that's either going to street tomorrow or maybe it's going to be in a couple months. You know, the hype already has started, as I'm sure everybody in this room already knows. But we also do offer IP67 rated options. We have wall plates. We do try radio with scanning options. So everything that people are used to and what you have seen 
from access points, from anybody else in terms of this space, yeah, Fortinet's got that. So it's everything that you're used to. In addition, from an accessory perspective, and it was funny, in, in the past we haven't really gone into accessories, and then it seems like almost every year when I'm talking to delegates afterwards and I talk about, for example, the first one that we standardized the brackets across all the APs, they're like, oh, I wish you talked about that. I wish more vendors were doing that. That's such a big deal. So here you go, guys. It's on the slide. This was a big initiative that actually some, someone that people may be familiar with in previous years that spoke, uh, Ben Wilson, actually, this was a big initiative of his over the last couple of years to converge this down and standardize this. So you take last generation's AP off the wall, new generation AP can click right onto that spot. Doing away with this hassle of, it all has to be completely dismounted, all new screw holes, all no, no, we're done with that. We've even done an outdoor bracket for the antenna mounting for like some panel antennas on outdoors. So you can actually get everything assembled and all wired up at the bottom of the ladder quickly and easily, carry one thing up, mount it on the pole. And trying to make the installer's life as easy as possible. We've got under seat enclosures. That's another one I bumped into somebody recently that was like, oh, I didn't know you guys did that. Yeah. Why wouldn't we? This is what people expect from a wireless vendor. So we do do that. What, why wouldn't you as most manufacturers go to a third party vendor for things like enclosures? Uh, right. And so I think that's why, at least I know I was surprised to hear about it. Yeah. Um, if you have Fortinet branded enclosures, right? That's something that I, we don't see out of your competitor. Yeah, it, it, it was important to us. And we know, you know, every vendor's AP are slightly different shapes. It's how we differentiate. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, so it's important to us to make sure that we have an underseat enclosure that truly does fit our access points and that we can sell to you or to anybody and say, no, this will fit. You know, you don't have to try and guess, read other specs, get measurements from us, and then find that there's some weird oddity where, sure, measurement by measurement says it'll fit. Then you get to two things and it's like, it closes all but that, no, none, none of that nonsense. And antenna options. I think that's another interesting thing that I've had people question of like, well, uh, yeah, but do you guys have all the different antennas? Because I know you guys ship with antennas in the box. Yeah, we do. Uh, it, it's... It really is a full bore enterprise class AP portfolio. And that extends to the applications as well. Now, some of these things have actually gotten whole sessions in previous mobility field days. It's always a little hard for us, again, with the variety of products we have to decide what are we going to focus on this time. But I wanted to give it a little feeling we have Florida Presence. So Presence Analytics, I think everybody is aware of this. We've seen it before. You know, who's in the building? What are their, what are their characteristics? I fully understand. I, I know, uh, you know Keith isn't here this year. I know he has certain feelings about things like Captive Portal and, and collecting people's information. But I do know that that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there who request this and ask for it. But we offer it. We have 40 guests. All again, all about guest management, BYOD onboarding. Because again, that's something that a lot of people look for from their vendor. They don't want to have to try and piecemeal from multiple vendors because nine times out of 10, it works 95%, but not on that weird little five. So we take care of that. And then I think it was last year, Suman's keep me honest, I think it was last year that we demonstrated some of our NAC uh, functionality. So we're not going to demo that this year, but I would encourage anybody who's curious by what I'm about to say, you can go look up those videos from last year. We actually have two levels of NAC. So we actually feature a level of NAC that's completely on board on our next generation firewall, which acts as our wireless controller. Built in, free of charge, easy rules, set them up, great way to onboard things securely onto your wireless network. So that's something that we can do that we call Fortilink NAC. Like I said, we did a whole demo of how that worked last year. Great way to familiarize yourself with it. But then of course we have a full product version. That would be Fortinac. That's where you've got the ability, full multi-vendor operation, real-time posture assessment, all those sorts of things that you would expect from a full-blown NAC feature. One of my good friends that, that I kind of share this portfolio with across switching and wireless often talks about, you know, if you think about it as one is a feature, one is a product, that automatically will kind of tell you what to imagine in terms of how much functionality each comes with. So the onboard yeah. the link NAC that, excuse me, um, that actually is not multi-vendor, that's... 
That is specific to Fortinet equipment. Okay. So that that's going to be like a Fortinet access point with our Fortinet uh, wireless controller, which okay. is our next generation firewall, the Fortigate. Gate. I know this is a lot of forty language. I know in the past people have suggested drinking games. Do not do that. There's going to be way too many forties. I would like you to make it through the entirety of our presentation today. You will not make it if you if you do anything every time we say forty. But yes, our next generation firewall is our controller. So if you have our controller, our access point, then those NAC, that NAC will function. If you have our our controller with the forty gate plus our switches plus our access point then you can also do NAC on both the wired side and the wireless. Okay. Or the NAC would allow you to have other vendor switches and do NAC on those other vendor switches, NAC on other vendor access points as well. Okay. So if you need that multi-vendor compatibility, that's fine. Another way that we sometimes talk about it beyond what the question you asked is oftentimes when I'm talking to folks, they're sort of on a journey for where they are with you know, zero trust of devices and, and NAC in general. Florida Lincoln Act is kind of a good place to start if you're just figuring that out. Hey, we can figure out what this device is, put in the right security context when it connects. If that's sort of the level that you're at as a company with understanding and dealing with NAC, great place to start. Perfect place to start. No money outlay, get, get up and going, start understanding what it means to do that. And then as you become more mature and ready to continue on that journey, or an act becomes a good way to, to further the features in, uh, that you have available to you. Okay. Does that answer? Yeah, for you? yeah, thank you. Perfect. <clears throat> now, from a management perspective, a lot of what you'll hear us focusing on today is going to be kind of our standard management. That is FortiGate itself, our next generation firewall, managing the switches and access points. And so, nice little screenshot, you can see that's the spectrum analysis right in the firewall UI. So all of what you would usually think of for a wireless controller built directly into our next generation firewall. That is our wireless controller. So everything you think of for a wireless controller from any other vendor, it, I know it's a little weird to think about it, built into a firewall. For those of you who just love the cloud, it's gotta be cloud. How, how, how can you tell me I need to log into a, a device? We have a cloud version of that. So if you'd rather manage you know, a couple forty gates via the cloud, not a problem. We have something, uh, I know it's gonna blow your mind, it's called FortiGate Cloud, um, that allows you to do that. So it's gonna allow you to directly manage those forty gates via cloud interface. Is this a subscription service? Uh, so we have a couple levels. So it, you, if you wanna do long-term long, long retention and more complicated configuration, yeah, you're gonna have a subscription for that. There are some basic level things that you can do without the subscription, but most enterprises are going to be looking at the subscription level. Um, at scale, and this is like large enterprises, this is really where Florida Manager makes sense. As you might imagine, that's our manager platform. This is where if you start getting like five, six, seven controllers, a aka FortiGates, you're really going to want to move to Florida Manager. FortiGate Cloud is a little bit more intended for the 2Z, 3Z type of, type of person. Once you need to do large scale templatizing and moving things and, and configuring things at a big scale, you're gonna to wanna to move to FortiManager. Manager. And yes, there's a cloud version of that. So again, it doesn't mean that you've now moved away from the cloud if this is what matters to you. So we can offer that option as well. Um, again, management at scale, pretty straightforward in that. But, you know, we do understand not everybody is deploying a FortiGate. Sometimes it's just that's not what you're budgeted for right now. Like, look, you may, you may listen to everything that we talk and you say, that, that sounds awesome. I want to go there. But right now, I don't have budget to be replacing all my firewalls right now. That's fine. We have something called FortiLAN Cloud. Again, what it does, no FortiGate necessary, managed directly via the cloud switches and access points. This as well to, to the question asked earlier, there is a free tier of this, fairly small in size, fairly limited in scope, can't do a lot of sites, can't necessarily have a large number of APs. So again, an enterprise class customer is gonna to wanna to subscribe to the service, but if you're small enough, Fortaland Cloud does offer a free tier that a particularly small customer would be able to do just fine on. What, what are you thinking for size for small customers? Is that 20 switches and 50 APs? Uh, 
where where do you think that transition occurred? For for me, in terms of where I would start saying you should be looking at the enterprise class, if you're much beyond like a mom and pop handful of, handful of switches, handful of APs, you would likely want to be looking at the subscription level. Okay. Because there there's a fair amount of enterprise configuration that that's there. Really, you could almost think of it as if you're a professional IT guy, the things that the knobs you're likely going to want is in the enterprise class. Got it. It's really kind of mom and pop that the freemium's geared for where I don't know, I don't care, I want to plug it in, I want you to kind of just figure a bunch of stuff out, and I want my SSID to show up. And as long as that shows up and I'm online, I'm a happy guy, that's kind of what that free tier is intended for.